So if we have t-shirts, hats, patches, whatever in the web store, these days I'm not really doing a merchandising turn on vid. I just roll them into the review vids as they come out, like this KRV. For instance, here's our very popular owl patch. That's pissed off owl. It's been out for a number of years. And we were actually going to discontinue it. Uh, TM Peers wouldn't let us do it. <laughs> so we've brought it back and it's in the web store. We try to keep it stocked. It does sell out. We've had lots of requests, by the way, for desert coloration of both pissed off and alert owl. Here they are. I think I showed them in another video recently. So there you go. Yeah, thanks for supporting the project. Uh, very independent voice in the gun and knife industry. You know that, right? Um, being financially independent allows that, helps it. We like that. We're going to talk about fixed blade knives in this KRV, specifically for EDC. Now, in all my gear checks, maybe I'm not remembering this, but as I've checked you guys through the years, what are you carrying? What do you have? I don't. I don't ever remember anyone ever carrying a fixed blade knife. Uh, again, maybe I'm, I'm just not remembering it right. Um, so for the review vid, I actually have to pretend someone out there does it. <laughs> no doubt, the guys that do it will show up in the comments. I do it every day, but I, I honestly think they're in the minority. I myself don't regularly. I have done it on occasion, but generally I don't. My system doesn't work well with a fixed blade. For rule of law EDC. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and the knife we're going to consider is actually pretty excellent. I've just learned about it myself and I thought I'd bring it to the table. We'll do a little mini review, show you some competitive options. This is the Bradford Guardian 3. Cool knife, huh? It looks cool, presents well. There's his website, Bradford. You're welcome for the free publicity. Here's another one. This is uh, the same blade in black. I believe that's black and nitride. I could be wrong. And both of these steels are M390. Now, nowadays in the Caravis, I don't spend a lot of time talking about the steels. I've, I've just been doing this for so many years. It's, uh, it gets old. It just adds to the video length. But let me ask you this. Would you carry this knife EDC? And I went to his website. I did a little research on it. And I really like his approach. His approach is... I'm going to build a fixed blade knife that will replace and weigh about the same as a heavy duty folding knife. And I think he achieved his, his goal. He really did. I've, I have brought a lot of heavy duty tactical folding knives, maybe heavy duty EDC knives to the table before. I've liked a lot of them, some not so much. Um, weight is a big issue for me. It always has. I will never apologize for that. I think it is with a lot of smart users of blades and knives and whatever gear you want to throw in there. Would you carry this EDC? Well, maybe you don't have an answer yet. Let's talk about the details briefly. Um, obvious, obviously, philosophy of use, like we said, it's a utility knife that you're carrying with you. And I'm in a rut now. I just am. Uh, the knife I have on me, and I always do this for EDC, is just an Endura 4 and Hat 40. No, that's just this is what I'm talking about. This is what I carry. It's just a folding knife. It's out fast. It auto deploys with a zip tie mod. Let's just throw it up there. How does that look? Oh, that's cool. Um, I don't have time in the video, nor do I want to make time to show you a bunch of heavy duty folders and go up against that. Instead, I'm going to show you, as you can see, hanging out in the wings here, just a little bit, some fixed blade alternatives to the Guardian 3. Philosophy use EDC. I don't think it's a tactical blade myself. Um, we'll look at ergonomics. Let's just do it right now. First up, the handle. I'm kind of going out of order here, but you get it. Uh, the one criticism I would level, I think it's valid, is there are some sharp transitions here. You know, if I were carrying this blade, like, routinely, what would I do? Uh, I would probably take some sandpaper and radius this. Now, in hand, if we look at the ergonomics on the Bradford Guardian 3, it's actually pretty good. It is. I mean, it locks in the hand well. I don't really notice in, in hand that it has a hot spot and the sharp handle transitions aren't really bugging me there. Okay, and it actually has jimping on the top. And the reason I'm rolling in the ergos here is because tactical blade needs high traction. Does this have it? Uh, I would say it's pretty good, better than you would think. But I don't think that's its calling. I like how it's rounded back here for the hand. So there's no sharp things digging in your hand right there. 
locks in like that. A lot of detail work. Uh, we'll leave philosophy views at that. Not a hunting knife that I see it. No. A lot of better choices. Uh, the weight, like I said, compares very favorably with heavy duty folders. 5.6 ounces total carry weight, and that's with a leather sheath. Well done. They do have a lot of different versions of this knife out. They have a lot of different steels. I've seen it in CPM3V, N690. I've seen a lot of different handle colorations. I've seen different sheath treatments to include Kydex. And I think all of them are interesting. They are. I love the blade shape. This one has a stonewashed finish on it. Flat ground from the upper portion. The edge as it arrives to you is pretty much perfection. There's no way I'd put this on my sharpener and like do something to it. It's perfect until it got dull. Then I'd take care of it. By the way, sharpen your knives. On the gear checks, dudes, you continue to under-impress me with the edginess of your uh, blades. They're almost always dull. Or you're still wearing the factory edge from six months ago. Yeah, I, I seriously, I see that all the time. How about the sheath? Well, it's designed to be carried horizontally, maybe in a kidney style of carry. So if you're right-handed, your belt's right here, you'd carry it right here, and it actually is a system that works. Uh, this isn't the first knife company that's ever come out with this. It's been around since probably the cowboy days. But it works, especially with a smaller blade like this. In competitive alternatives, we'll look at some other options. They're just interesting. They just add a little bit of interest to the video. Um, would I prefer the leather or Kydex? Um, you guys who know me follow the show and have followed the KRV show here forever know that I like synthetic materials. Um, Leather's cool though. I, I wouldn't say I, I always dislike leather. In fact, if it's not in a high moisture environment, sometimes I would go with leather. It has that second cool thing to it. You like it. As you use this, it's going to show a lot of wear on it. It's going to get polished and shiny. And I don't know. I'm just kind of crazy this way. It kind of turns into an heirloom when it shows wear. Well, and I just showed you my Enduro 4, Enduro 4 and that's just one of what 300 knives I put in my EDC rotation. I mean, it has wear and tear on it already and you know the boys will like this. It's like, hey, that's dad's knife. Something like that. This is a little bit thicker than Kydex. It seems like a decent leather sheath. You don't have like polished edges here though. Like you would see, well, here you go. Here's a Bark River so you'll be looking at. This is a good comparison right here. So this is an ultra quality sheath right here. This is a Bark River. I want to say Sharpshooter. Yeah, Sharpshooter leather does, Leatherworks does it for him. See, this is what I'm talking about. Ah, it's really nice. Um, you know, maybe it's a price point thing. They start doing that, they're going to have to charge more. I don't know. This is produced, I think, 100% in the United States, by the way, in case you're interested. Uh, let's see. Handle construction we talked about. Ergonomics, good enough. Um, how about competitive options? This will be where we can kind of finish out the details. By the way, I do like the double choil thing going on here with the Guardian 3. Let's see. Which one would I carry between the Guardian 3... And then, oh dude, I love this knife. I tried to find this little brother. I have it around here somewhere. I couldn't find it. Whoosh! Knives of Alaska Elk Hunter in D2. It's 6.8 ounces. So it's going to be a little bit heavier. D2 steel, like I said, about 85 bucks. And if I didn't say so, this Bradford Guardian 3 is going to be about a buck 60, give or take. Is that super cheap? Mm, no, but for a US produced fixed blade, it's totally in the ballpark. Totally. Uh, fair, fair price. No, no questions. The, I think the sheath on the Guardian 3 wins out over the Elk Hunter, which is designed as a hunting knife. I'll give you that. I mean, but I would just go to Red Hill Kydex and have them make me one of those awesome sheaths they've done in the past. Doing that 0 .080 Kydex, horizontally oriented. I put some type of G loop or Kydex carry on it. Eh, you know, something to, something to think about. One thing advantage the leather does have is it is a little bit giving and softer. So if this goes against your body, your belly, whatever, it, it doesn't dig in as much as plastic or Kydex. I forgot to mention that. Uh, I love this knife though. Perfect jumping. Look at that, dudes. It's got the double choil thing going on here. In this case, this is designed as a skinny knife, as a game dressing knife. This is also 100% produced in the U.S. and I love the handle on this. It's that non-sticky polymer. That's Elk Hunter. The one I was trying to find that is a little tiny brother, it's the Alpha Wolf. That's probably a more preferred EDC knife, and I would choose it over the Guardian 3. That's just me, though. Let's go low end. Next one will be the, you guys like this, the Kershaw Skyline. Fixed blade, no whip sound. 
This was in the limited edition orange a few years back. I know a lot of TMPers bought this. A lot. This is like 20 bucks on sale at the time. I don't know what they are now. This is 14C28M steel. It weighs like next to nothing. Total carry weight, and that's with a leather sheath, is 3.8 ounces. And there's the leather sheath it comes with. I think it came with it. I honestly don't remember. And there was a dude at one time that was making Kydex for it. So as a neck knife, you could use way too heavy for me as a neck knife. Knife. Uh, oh, nothing. You can wear it. No, I just I don't do that. But just a thought, you know. I think the handles on both these knives dominate that one for comfort. Do you guys remember this knife? It's discontinued, and maybe Cold Steel brings it back. I actually have one. Here's a <laughs> insight. You guys will laugh. Uh, I actually have one hanging from my shower, and I have for the last ten years, actually longer than that. And it is a Cold Steel Mini Tack. So I have it hanging from near my shower head. So if anyone tries to get sporty at night, I've got this. And let me tell you, it's been in a high moisture environment all those years and it's shown no rust. This version was in O6. It's a Tanto blade, obviously. And carry weight, I have it written here, 3.7 ounces. And that is a really great sheath on it. I have the clip removed now. That was a Securex sheath and it was loose, so I actually stitched it and super glued it so I have more tension on the mini tack. I just love this blade. It's so cool. Kratong grip. I reviewed it like in 2008. Which one would you carry between the two? Uh, for EDC, I would probably... This one is lighter. I like light. You know that. Um, but the rubberized handle for EDC, I don't like. It's grabs on clothes. I would probably choose one of these. Subject to change. Uh, let's go low rent again. This is a cold steel Pendleton light. 3.8 ounces. $14. Dang, this is a great value. Great EDC knife. Crappy sheath. Whatever. Resheath it. 40, uh, 4116 crop, which is pretty much rust proof, proven in my own testing. Watch the video. Extruded blade. It's cheapo. You know, polypropylene handle. Nothing special. But a beater, you lose it. Don't even worry about it. How many of these could you buy for one of those? A fleet. Pendleton Light. There's a whole bunch of other ones that are similar to it that I've reviewed. Look them up. Mora Bushcrafter. What? EDC in that? I have the clip removed on that. As you can see, 5.2 ounces, 35 bucks, Sandvik stainless steel. This thing is heavier than it seems because of the stock of the steel is so thick. It's meant as a wilderness knife, not an EDC knife. I really, really love this orange color. I'll give you the link to it where I got it, Amazon, in the bottom of the video, their description. Which one would I EDC between that and the Guardian 3? <laughs> the Guardian 3 all day long. This is just too big for me to EDC it. it wow. It just is. Don't forget about this one. Cutlery Shops. And that is the Griffin brand M10. This is in VG10 full flat grind. And let me look the weight on this. 6.6 uh, .6 ounces. About 125 bucks. Uh, guys have bought this and actually, real, actually used them hard and loved them. This is designed not so much as an EDC knife as a defensive backup weapon. And it does still have those sharp handle transitions, which I criticized years ago. They're still there. And kind of jumping on the top. Really nice sheaths with these, albeit not the lightest weight. She's around. How about the Nim can't speak. Nim Cub by Benchmade. You know, I was rummaging through my box of knives and I was surprised that I still had this. I was like, oh man, I remember that knife. It's cool. But that guy that goes to show you, this this is about as light as it comes. I'm going to throw it on the scale. I won't show you, but I think total carry weight is going to be less than that. No, it's 5.3, so it's almost the same weight as a Guardian 3. But I've never carried this one, you know? As far as carry package, the Guardian 3 beats it. It's shorter in overall length, which makes it more comfortable. I mean, can you imagine carrying this horizontally on your belt? There's really no provision for it. It's set up more than anything for Molly. This is a soldier's knife, Molly Gear knife. That's kind of what I reviewed it as in 2009. Still a good knife. Uh, let's go up rent on this one. And this is the Bark River Mini North Star. I don't even know if they make it, but when we bought it, we spent, what, 180 bucks on this thing. 4.2 ounces, A2 steel, convex ground, typical Bark River quality. Now we're kind of getting into some maybe more appropriate competition for the Guardian 3. Here we have an American-made knife with a premium tool steel, M390 going against a very proven A2. 
And by the way, that's in stag, and that is just gorgeous. It's beautiful. Which one would you carry? Nothing. Oh, let me tell, let me show you the details on that super quick. It's got no sharp corners whatsoever. This is what I'm talking about. See how they rounded that handle on that stag? Compare it to the Guardian Three. See the sharp sharpness, squared corners. Uh, I would carry this one, the Mini North Star. They're about the same size. They're about the same weight. This one actually has really nice jimping on it. It's a short run, but it works. The steel is excellent. Convex grind, you know, keeping that sharp in the same convex fashion. I've talked about that. It's a hassle. I'd probably just put a conventional grind on it and call it good. This all day long. Is it about the same price? Yeah. Pretty close. And then I have a, a larger Bark River. This is going to be... It's kind of fun showing these. I really haven't showed them before. Bark River Highland, 6.8 ounces. This is all also an A2 steel. It's almost like a larger version of this, but the blade shape's different. This is more of a hunting knife. But could you EDC this one? You've already seen the quality of the sharpshooter, you know, she's on this, right? They're amazing. This is for like a fire steel, if you want to carry that. This really doesn't have a provision for horizontal carry. Like I said, if I wanted to EDC it, I'd just make me an appropriate sheet. Okay, well, a couple of options. Uh, I think the Guardian 3, though, is what it, they say it is. It's a, it's a really valid replacement for a heavy-duty folding knife. It really is. That's, that's its calling, and I think it will accomplish, speaking of strength, which we haven't talked about, um, the goal of not breaking under reasonable knife use. If you are a hardcore user of your blades and your occupation for fun, whatever, um, I've seen a lot of failures of folders. You know, they loosen up. The frame locks, especially, have been very disappointing. Everyone acts like frame locks are so strong. They're not. You know, about the only one that I would recommend is a triad lock from Cold Steel. That's a strong locking mechanism, and it would give this knife a run for its money in most tests. But thick steel, look at that. M390, various steels available. It's a cool knife. Recommend it. If you're looking for a cool US produced, short overall length, comfortable, reasonably priced, I really think it is, high quality fixed blade knife, Guardian 3. See ya! Air compressor coming on, standard.